Hello, big team. Hello, friends. Welcome to Lizzie Fay Loves Books. I'm Elizabeth, and it is Friday, July the 9th, and I would like to do a Friday Reads video and share with you what I've been reading and what I am reading this weekend and just kind of give you an update for what I read in the first week of July. So I didn't do a Friday Reads video last week because it was, what, the second, and I was just getting started with a bunch of big books and buddy reads. So because of all the big books that I'm reading this month and on into August, I haven't finished a whole lot so far for the month, but I'm still really happy with the reading that I have managed to get done. And I have finished three books. Uh, all of them have been audiobooks, and I'm in the middle of a couple of buddy reads and uh, a book for book club for next week. So let's just chat about what I have been reading. So the first book I finished was actually one of my big books, and I wanted to read this. I would like to read several books by Francine Rivers. Up to this point, I had only read three other books by her, Redeeming Love and the three books in the Mark of the Lion trilogy. But back in June, Becca from Hicks Picks Books mentioned that she was going to lead this as a read-along, and she started a new Goodreads group, which I will link down below if you still want to read this book. And quite a few people jumped on board immediately and started reading it. I think Becca herself read it last month. I, of course, am very goal-oriented, so I had all my, you know, June goals to finish before I could start it. Uh, but myself, and I think a couple of others, have started it in July, and once I started it, I really didn't want to stop. I didn't want to space it out. I wanted to just get it done. It was so good. And this was my first contemporary book by Francine Rivers, and I thought it was great. It, it is called The Masterpiece because it's centered around an artist, and he came up through a, a very at-risk childhood. His mother was... Um, you know, not able to be a good mom. She died young and he was in foster care and just, um, I don't know. He, well, early on he became a graffiti artist as part of a gang. And then later on he was able to turn his art into something profitable and became a very well, well known and recognized artist. And so he is our main lead character, uh, our main male lead character. Then we have a female character who becomes his assistant and she is a Christian, but she has fallen into various mistakes throughout her life. She also had a troubled childhood and she is just trying to live the straight and narrow, but finding it very difficult. And she ends up becoming his assistant. And so the story goes from there. And it was just very compelling, very good, thoroughly enjoyed it. It's on Hoopla on audio if you like to read audiobooks and this sounds interesting to you. And uh, I would highly recommend it. Also, uh, both of them throughout the story had uh, each had their own supernatural experience and I, I just thought it was a very interesting um interesting thing to read about, and uh, I very much enjoyed the book. If you want to join in the read along, there's no set time to do it. You can read it anytime you want and then go on Becca's read along group and comment. She has the discussion threads divided into a chunk of chapters. Uh, I think it's divided into five or six different sections. So, um, you know, feel free to comment about each section as you finish it. And I hope you enjoy it if you decide to pick it up. So then the second book I finished is one that my sister sent me a while back. I did listen to this on audio, even though I've got the physical book here. This was one I had wanted to read in June for my author binge project. I was trying to binge read or read at least three books by three different authors whose name is Lori, L-O-R-I. So this is Lori Copeland, and I did get one of her standalones read. I have read a lot of Lori Copeland series over the years, and I've loved all of them, but I had never read any of her standalone books, and she's got quite a few. So I read one in June that I really, really loved. It was called Now and Always, I believe, and it, it was just fantastic. And this one is called Roses Will Bloom Again. It, um, it is about kind of a second chance romance sort of an idea. I think that's a, uh, a popular romance trope, or it might not be popular. I don't know, but it happens, you know, in romance books. But this is a Christian romance, and uh, it's about this young woman who... I'm not sure what her age is exactly, maybe late 20s. Her sister, who was only a few years older than her, just she found out that her sister had died at age 35. And they had been estranged 
for a few years. And so she gets a notification that her sister has died. So she has to go back to her hometown to take care of things and ends up running into her old love. They had fallen in love at almost really what their family and community considered too young to get married. They tried to run off and elope and their family stopped them. And so she felt like he didn't do enough to try to keep her in his life. And so she just left and didn't, um, didn't leave word of where she was or anything. So they have not seen each other in years. Both of them think that the other one doesn't want anything to do with them. And so it's their reconnecting and, healing and uh and then there's things going on in the town the, the house where she uh where her sister had lived and where she had grown up the town wants to buy it and uh, tear it down and make and put a parking lot there and you know she doesn't want to do that but she doesn't really want to live there so you know it's a struggle with knowing what to do after your family has died what do you do with their belongings. And I just thought it was very, very good. I thoroughly enjoyed it. It's called Roses Will Bloom Again and um, and Emma's Heart Will Never Be the Same. That's the subtitle. And it's by Lori Copeland. So then the other book that I have finished is a buddy read slash read along slash Sunshine State book. And this is a book that I most was interested in from the Sunshine State list. So I chose this one to read out of all 15. And then I chose one randomly. And then you guys helped me choose some to read next. So I went ahead and decided to start with this one. And I set up some threads on my Goodreads group. So even though my Goodreads group is Lizzie Face Comfy Corner, this is not what I would call a comfort book, but you know, I've got that venue, so why not use it? Anyway, um, uh, uh, Donna from a studio in the library and I have already finished it. A storm from storm reads is planning to read it. And anybody else who would like to read this, I think one other person, um, uh, commented that they would like to join in, uh, D I believe. And, uh, if anyone else wants to join in, it is not too late. I divided it into four groups. There's 20 chapters. So after each five chapters, you can come back and comment. At first, I thought it started out a little bit slow, but then by the, you know, chapters six through 10, or yeah, six through 10, things really got exciting very quickly. This is also the beginning of a series, and uh, I'm very intrigued to continue to read on. Uh, I thought it was very good. It is, uh, it's creepy, it's weird, and that is what Kenneth Opal writes. So, um, anyway, he, uh, this is my third book by him, and uh, he's a very interesting imagination. So, um, anyway, it's a middle grade book, and if that sounds interesting to you, then you might want to pick it up. It is about plants who well they the seeds are in the rain and then the plants grow so fast and start taking over everything that's basically what it's about in a nutshell my camera is telling me that i am almost out of battery it's running low so let me quickly show you what else i'm in the middle of that i am about to finish um Oh, well, I just barely started the next, uh, the only other standalone I had planned to read in June. I may as well go ahead and listen to this one, Monday Morning Faith by Lori Copeland. I have barely started that one. Uh, this is what I'm listening to in my car, Ginger Pie by Eleanor Estes. This is a Newberry winner from the uh, 50s, and I'm almost done with this one. In fact, if we go anywhere today, which I would like to, the bookmobile is in our area today. Um, it's not the closest place it usually comes, but that was yesterday and I missed it. If today it's a little farther, but not super far. So if I get in the car at all today, I think I'll be able to finish this one and I'll tell you more about it later. Uh, I'm doing a buddy read, a couple of buddy reads. One of them is the Homestead Brides Collection by various authors. Mary Connolly has the first book. She's probably the most well-known of all these authors. I'm doing this buddy read with Bobby Sue Davis. She has an Instagram page and uh, I will link it below and you can follow her on Instagram. She reads a lot of Christian fiction and her and I have chatted about different books and given each other book bookish recommendations. And this is the first time that we're doing a buddy read. So we are in the middle of the third story. There are nine, and we're I think we're going to just stretch it out over the whole month. And then I'm doing another buddy read with my friend Elizabeth Tyree from the channel Elizabeth Tyree or Soul Stained Ink. We are reading book four in the Cemetery of Forgotten Books, The Labyrinth of the Spirits by Carlos Ruiz Zafon. And this is just very good, very compelling. Um, I'm still kind of, as we're, we're like about here, we've read this much and we're both listening on Scribd. And there's a few things I don't remember. And thankfully she remembers more than I do. So we're kind of helping each other out 
out to remember, you know, when something is brought up and it's like, oh yeah, you know, that was that and this is this. So anyway, it's been very good so far. A beautiful writing style and we're both really enjoying it. And then I'm almost done with the dietary book I have been reading. It's Eat to Live by Joel Furman. I have low-key started this, but not full force yet. Uh, I am, I've just got a couple of chapters left. Uh, yeah, I, I'm uh, ready to start chapter nine, and that's where the diets are laid out. And there's some sample diets to get you started. I, I definitely want to commit to doing this diet very strictly for six weeks. And that's what he recommends. Give it six weeks. And if you don't like it, then, you know, you could move on. But um, I think I'm excited about the results. My sister and I have already been um, reducing our eating. Well, she's been doing Weight Watchers a long time. And, uh, and they're not meeting right now. So we've been weighing in with each other once a week. And I've lost a little bit already. But I think when I start this, then I'm going to see it start to melt away a lot faster. If you ever go back to one of my videos from 2015 or 16, um, you'll see I have gained a lot of weight since then and I want to get back to where I was and maybe then some. Uh, then there is a book club book that I am reading. I don't have a physical copy, but look at these cool bookmarks that our librarian made. We are reading The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue and that's our book club book for next week and I'm about half done with it. It's so compelling. Really enjoying it and it is by... Don't know. It was by V.E. Schwab. That's who it's by. This is my first book by V.E. Schwab. She is a booktube darling, and you know I hear uh, about her all the time, and then this is my first book, so it is very good. So that is about it. I need to sign off before my phone dies. I need to go plug in my phone and uh, and then see if, if I can get Emily out of her room long enough to go to the bookmobile. So that's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you are reading a good book. Have a great day, and God bless you.